This is what's on the line, or was going to be on the line, between Gaethje and Melvin Gillard. Gillard unable to make weight, so this becomes a catch weight at 159 pounds. We take a look at the tail of the tape for this battle between Justin Gaethje and the young assassin, Melvin Gillard. Gaethje, 25 years of age, 5'11", weighted at 154.8 and a 69-inch reach. Gillard, 31 years of age, 5'9". There you see the problem, 158.8 and a 71-inch reach, but we're all set to go for a catch weight bout. We now set it inside the cage. That is where Jazz Securo has the official introduction. Division one wrestler with great striking. This is his third title defense, and this should be interesting. Keep your eye on this. Yeah. For the official introductions, we set it inside to Jasakura. Ladies and gentlemen, your co-main event of the night is brought to you by Autoshopper.com. We're scheduled for three rounds at a World Series of Fighting Catchweight of 159 pounds. And now, introducing on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, this seasoned veteran fighter. His record, 32 victories, 13 losses, two draws, 21 victories coming by way of knockout. Standing five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 159 pounds even, fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida by way of New Orleans, Louisiana. Introducing Melvin, the young assassin, Claude. Okay, no secret here, he loves to strike, and that's where he's at his best. He normally is wild, but he needs to pick his shots, move in and out, and since Gagey comes straight forward, move backwards and to the side, counter from there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on my right, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. His record is perfect. 12 victories, zero defeats. 12 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Standing 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing 155 pounds. He fights out of Denver, Colorado by way of Safford, Arizona. He is the undefeated, undisputed, reigning, defending World Series of Fighting Lightweight Champion of the World, Justin the Highline Gaethje. He needs also to fight using his head because he's wild as well, but he can't rush in. So he needs to stay outside the reach of his opponent. And when he feels he can connect, attack. Maybe even go for a takedown and ground and pound. Your referee is Andrew Glenn. Gentlemen, you got the rules earlier. You both understand the rules. Are there any questions? Follow my instructions at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. If you want to touch him up, step back. No touch. No need to ask. <laughs> and Michelle Jean-Pierre gets us started in the co-main event here in this catchweight bout between Melvin Gillard and Justin you Gaethje. Ready? Folks, you ready? I would be Fight. very surprised, boss, if this went the full three rounds. It won't. Gaethje comes in with a bit of anger, chip on his shoulder after that, unable to make weight, so this becomes a catch weight bout. The former training partners now become opponents inside the cage here at World Series of Fighting 15. But for Gaethje, obviously, smart fighter, but he's got to control that emotion. He really has to. He's a lot man, he's an explosive guy, he can't fight. Dipping down first, and that may make a high kick. That's a little Gaethje trying to stay clear of that big ride that Clark will load up. Amazing how he lands a 
the punch, and then he backs one second, then he's coming forward again. Here he is on the ground. Yeah, he, because he got hit one time. <laughs> now he gets angry. At the end of round number one, Bell sounds, referee steps in, and Cagey fires off a short right. I think he got inside his head with the jab. Boss, we were talking during that break, and I think you'd have to give that first round to Melvin Gillard. Well, he had a lot of the dog, yes. That's not official. Of course, as Cagey had success with that low inside kick at the end of round number one. It 
put Gallard on his seat. All right, what adjustments do you make if you're the champ Gaethje, and how do you counter that straight left that Gallard is finding so much success with? Like I said, you, put, you want to put your left hand in front of your jaw, like the palm out, you know? That's, that's, that's just that's check it up? Just, just check it in front of your face. And then you still have the right, and as soon as she hits the right, connect, then you can pull with the left again. Okay, sure, you shut it down your left hand for a bit, but you can't keep, keep getting hit like this. You see, he's a little on his toes now from that point. Yeah. See, Gaethje. If you're the large corner, you yell at your fighter, just keep doing what you're doing, keep leaving no. that left jab, set up the big right. And a one, two. Yeah. The one hit, right? One, two, one, two. Well, both these guys towards some power punches. If any of these connect, oh. it is lights out. That time, Gaethje, that was hard. the right connects. He's busy. And the hands come down for Gallard. Gallard may be in trouble. He's in trouble. He got the little shot right here. That set it up. That made him dizzy. You see, still up steady on the sheet. Throws these to the body now. I think he felt the body shot. There we go. And that right hook for shoulder landed. Both men willing to stand and throw. Right? Wait, wait for the spinning oh. elbow. Right? There's no one who does that against the fence. He says, I can do that too. I'm looking shot. Great head movement coming from Melvin Gallard as Gagey fires off the left, then the big overhand right, misses, but that uppercut finds its spot and does the knee. Oh, good uppercut there from Gallard. Gagey momentarily possibly caught an inadvertent finger to the left eye, and that brings the fans alive, and now it brings Gagey alive. He should go for a takedown. Just a takedown and ground and pound. That's what I would do if I would take to him if I was his corner. Why would you take his wrist? Oh, <laughs> slugging. Nice low kick. It's just that, you know, it's an ego thing right now. You know, so far to say, okay, I, I can't take it down. Yes, I can, but I want to show everybody I can stand with him as well. I say be smart about it. You get to the point where you wonder if Gage is going to say, I've had enough of this boxing stuff. Let's get this thing to the ground and see who's got the better jiu-jitsu. No, not even that. Take him down, be on top, just a throw balls from that position. Remember, Gage, Division I All-American wrestler in Northern Colorado. Nice to work. Both these guys getting tired. Nice high kick there. On the left foot row. Coming up on 90 seconds to go here in round two. This one's scheduled for three and a catch weight bout. Justin Gaethje in the white trunks, Melvin Gillard in the black trunks. Attack and you fight with heart and you start at the legs and you bring it out. 
Stop going for the head. Look at me. Wake up. Stop going for the head. No more rushing in and throwing bombs. Did you throw that from the one. low? Yep. Bring it up. Okay, you got that? Can you hear me? All right, thank you. Show it in the chest. Hey, you're going to finish it. Now listen, you start at the legs, go to the body, and throw combos to the head. And I want shorts. Pick them, break them. Stop going wide. Don't look for that one punch I got. Second toe. Okay. Got it. Second toe. Last round. Last round. Ready? No more rushing. You're ready. Throwing bombs. Would you throw from the low? Bring it up. Okay, you got that? Can you hear me? All right, thank you. Short right. range shots. Okay. You see him sitting on that bench? Get on his leg. And that was the sound coming from the corner of Justin Gaethje, the reigning champion in the lightweight division. This is a catchweight bout, and he has got his hands full, but literally with Melvin Gillard, who seems to be able to work that left-hand jab to almost perfection. And in the corner of Justin Gaethje, boss, they wanted to quit going for these home run hitting and bring those punches up. Bring them up. Yep. That was Trevor Whitman talking there. Nice advice. Just of equal time, we check in with Joey Varner, who's able to listen in in the corner of Melvin Gillard. Melvin Gillard's corner is, 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 they seriously believe Justin Gaethje is gassed, they think he's tired, they think he's ready to break, and they think if Melvin can keep that jab in his face, a nice, stiff, fast jab and snap his head back, he'll be able to create moments for a big shot. And the big shot they really want to see from him that they think is open is that uppercut. They said land that stiff jab, look for that uppercut up the middle, and take like his head off his shoulders. Let's see if Melvin Gillard can execute that plan. He's still got three minutes and 50 seconds to deal with the champion. He's got a bad attitude about this not being a title fight. He said it's a catchweight fight. All right, boss, if Melvin Gillard is somehow able to let them survive in this third round, as Gaethje seems to have found an opportunity in opening for those kicks and trying to take out that lead leg of Gillard, what do you do if Melvin Gillard wins in a catchweight fight and beats the champion? Because he doesn't get the belt. He doesn't get the belt. And that may be still he needs to fight at least one time and try to fight at this weight. And now Gillard in all kinds of problems because he has got a very sore lead left leg. Yep. So that's going to take away that effective jet who's not going to step into it as much. And Gaethje's going to continue to work on it. And Gaethje, this game gives Gaethje wings. You know, now he, feels, he smells the big crap. And he will come even more for him That's smart, moving to that yeah. side. Not to the other side. As soon as he moves to the other side, move low kick. Now, he should right away kick. There it is. Melvin Gillard barely putting any weight on that left leg. He is in trouble. And now Gaethje can really tee off. He should need the leg now. Two and a half minutes, halfway down to the last round. Boss, as much as Gillard is feeling that pain in that left leg right now, how bad is he going to be tomorrow morning? Oh, the worst. Go online and look for the leg from Uriah Faber after the Aldo fight. Just look at that picture. You have no clue what you see. He's got to watch out now. Because this happened to Robbie Lawler and Matt Melvin Manu. And Manu destroyed his leg in that one punch. But Manu found at the end of the third round. He cannot forget his defense now when he kicks. Two minutes. He's got to keep chopping it. Or fake it and come with a straight punch. Because it's almost the same movement as throwing the right low kick. Amazing how lack of any ground game that we've seen here with Justin Gaethje being a Division I All-American wrestler, Melvin Gillard just being a great all-around mixed martial artist, and this has been pretty much a standing war. There's that uppercut that the corner was asking for. Good job, knee in the leg. He needs to keep doing that, but do it with more power. Jump all the way to the side. And able to land a couple good uppercuts in there. Catch there and then fires off a nice body shot. Don't shoot like a reach around kick. 
Gaethje, as we talked about, can strike from so many different angles. Very unconventional the way he throws unique strikes and elbows and knees. Said keep chopping when the tree's about to come down. Yeah, but 35 seconds, can you, can you chop it down? Yolanda just trying to hang on. Gaethje trying to end this thing. decision when we return to Tampa. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of professional fighting, we will go to the judges' scorecards, and they have handed us a split decision. Judge Howard Reichbeck scores at 29-28, Gillard. Judge Barry Luxembourg scores at 29-28 for Gaethje. And Judge Michael Ross scores it 30 to 27 for your winner by split decision, Justin, the Highlight Kaichi. 30 27. Wow. At the first round, I thought it was uh, Gillard. Split decision goes the way of Justin Gaichi. Not sure about the 30-27 on no. that third. Judge Boss, you didn't like the sound of that one. No, I did not. I thought the first round, like you said, you know, he landed more punches. Gaethje was moving forward the whole time, which would count as well. Let's but, take a uh, look at the stats brought to us by CompuStrike, 193 to 101 in favor of Gaethje. Strikes landed 128 to 50. As you go down the line, power strikes landed. Gillard closes the gap 20 to 43. Kicks landed clearly in favor of Gaethje, especially in the third and final round. And there, your power kicks landed in favor of the champion, Justin Gaethje. Yes. You want to win. Get ready. Uh-huh. Listen. What you want to do? If you don't strike first, that's when they gon' come at you. Yeah. And you know it's true. Don't let your life get worse. Be timid, that ain't cool. Nah. No.